Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will implement a user tracker to display how many users are online in our public chat room. I will show you how we can do this right after a quick shout out to my new supporters on Patreon. A big hug to Tamislav and a high five to Peak. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And now let's get into it. So in this video we will implement the online tracker and also a little dot which additionally signals if another user is online or not. So if for example somebody joins this chat room this will turn green. To demonstrate this I join the chat now with Bobby. As we can see the dot turn green and we have one other person online in the chat now. Then I say hello. And if we're lucky, we get a response back and we can have a chat. Okay, let's code this now. So we need to count how many channels are in a channel layers group. As we're using the inbuilt memory layer locally, we cannot do this straight with the channels layer object, unfortunately. On a side note, Redis could do this, as it has more features available. However, we will count the users manually and add it to a property in the database. So I'm going to my models.py file, in the chat folder, and then here in our chat group class, I'm adding a users online property, which is a many-to-many -many field with the user class. I also add a related name of online in groups, so we could fetch all the groups this user is online in, and also blank is true. Okay, save this file. First, let's do a migration to the database. Control C, then Python managed to pi make migrations, then Python managed to pi migrate. And then spin up the server again with python manage.py run server. Alright, and now let's add the logic to our consumers.py file. I'm going here to the connect method. And just in here, I add now the logic to add and update online users. So first I check if this user is not online yet. So if self.user not in self.chatroom.user underscore online dot all. So if this user is not online in the chatroom, we add it to this user online property. we add the self.user. Alright, and once we added the user, we would like to call a function which updates the online count on all the user's browsers. We will define this function in a second. So self.updateOnlineCount. Alright, now let's add this logic also to our disconnect method. So here we have remove and update online users. So if the self.user is online in the chat room, we would like to remove this user. And then call the function again to update the online user count. Okay, and now let's define this function. So at the very bottom here, I add self as a parameter for this method. And first let's count how many users we have in this chat room. So online count self.chatroom.usersonline.count And then we broadcast this number to all the members of this public chat group. So async to sync, then self.channelayer.groupsend 
Then we specify the group name and the event. And the event is the data we're sending back to the browser. So let's define it now. We first specify the type, which indicates which method should handle the response. Online count handler. So this handler will render our htmx partial. We will define this method shortly. And we're sending through the online count variable. Like that. Okay, and now let's define the online count handler. This handler has the event parameter to retrieve the event arguments. Now let's get the online count from this event. And then we create our HTML partial. I'm using here the render to string function again. Then this is the HTML partial, which we will create in a second, and we're sending through the online count variable. And as last, we add the self.send function, which serializes the HTML partial and sends it back to the client. Okay, save this file. Now let's create this partial. I copy the name. Then in my templates, to partials, I add this new file. Then I'm going to the chat.html file to get the element I'm replacing. It is this element here. So I copy it. I also get rid of the three because we will add here now the count number we get from the backend. We save this file to my partial and paste it in here. Here I'm adding now my hx swap oob attribute. And set it to outer html. That means the whole element will be replaced. For WebSocket connection, we would not need to add this attribute if it's set to outer HTML, because when we use the HTMX extension, this will be added automatically. Okay, and then instead of the tree here, I add here this online count variable. Okay, save this file, and let's do a test. Let's restart the server. and back to the browser. I refresh the page. And as we can see here, we have two online users. Awesome, that worked. Now if Bobby goes to his profile page, it changed to one online. Now with one online, you might think there is one other person online. However, this is not the case, so it might be more user-friendly to subtract one from the count. So in my consumers to py file, we have here the online count, and I just add here minus one at the end. Okay, save this file. Now refresh the page again. And we have zero online. Now Bobby joins the chat again. And Bobby sees that one other person is online. Hello. Now as last, let's also add a slight animation to this number. So let's go to our partial. So I have here a fade in and scale animation. And I'm scaling the number here from 4 down to 1, which is the original size. And from opacity 0 to opacity 1. Then I copy here the name of the class which contains this animation. 
and add it to the span element. OK, save this file, and let's have a look. Bobby goes again to his profile page, and we see the small animation on the number now. Great! Now, as very last, let's also add a green dot to the chat window to further signal that somebody else is online. I'm going to my chat.html file. So here I have the online count. And just before that, I'm adding here a div with the ID online icon. All right, save this file. Then copy this element and we add it to our online count partial. So just here underneath. As mentioned, we don't have to actually include the hxswap OOB attribute if it's set to outer HTML. But here I'm adding some CSS classes now to display this green dot. So class, I position it absolute at the top left corner. fully round, with a green background color, and I'm adding a padding of 1.5. Alright, so this is displaying now a green dot if a user is online, and I would like to display a gray dot if nobody's online. So I copy this line, and change the green to gray here. All right, and now let's add the condition. So if we have an online count, meaning the online count is not zero, we display the green dot. Else we display the gray dot. and end if. OK, save this file, and let's have a look. I refresh the page. As we can see, the green dot appeared. Let's also refresh this window here. Nice, this symbolizes now that somebody's online. Bobby goes to his profile page again. And we have here a gray dot with no other people online. Nice. Okay, this is all for this video. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will see how we can add a Redis database in production. I hope to see you there. Until then, stay curious, my friends, and ciao ciao for now.